Hey everybody, how's it going? Extreme Trends here. When we hear about people going to jail, we often wonder who in their right mind would commit such a horrific crime. While most of these criminals are adults, there are in some cases where small children and even preteens end up going to prison for their crime. As a result, these kids spend the rest of their life behind bars to never see the daylight again. So let's take a look at 10 kids who grew up in prison. Number 10, Girl A. Now this isn't her real name, but rather a code name because no one really knows who this girl actually is and what is her true identity. On the 1st of June 2004, the 11 year old Japanese schoolgirl murdered her classmate in cold blood, 12 year old Satomi Matara. Reports suggest that Satomi was lured into an empty classroom by Girl A during their school lunch break and was stabbed to death. Girl A then proceeded to make her way to class as if nothing happened and everything was all okay, but she was covered in blood. Later, the teacher found the body of Satomi Matara in the empty classroom with her throat and arm slashed in a puddle of blood. The teacher quickly put two and two together and alerted the authorities. When Girl A was questioned about the murder, she confessed, claiming that she did it because Satomi made comments about her weight and she did not like it. Girl A was then declared not sound of mind and was institutionalized in September of the same year and she has been under psychiatric war since then and has not been released. Number 9, Graham Young. For someone so young to be enthusiastic about the subject of chemistry is usually a tale of delight for the children's parents and for the teachers. Sadly though, this child took his love for chemistry a little too far. Graham Young used his love for chemistry to fashion his own unique brands of poison which he loved to test on living things around him. At the age of 14, Graham Young dosed his family and friends with this poison that he's made by dropping it into their drinks and food. This caused all of his family and friends to get violently ill, including his stepmother who lost her life due to side effects taken up from ingesting the poison. After the death of his mother, Graham was taken to jail where he continued to take a keen interest in chemistry. Despite him being behind bars, his murder spree did not end there though, as in prison, he conducted another type of poison and provided a lethal dose to a prison staff worker who then lost his life. It's clear to see that Graham won't be getting out anytime soon. Number 8, John Venables and Robert Thompson. Some stories are just hard to tell, moreover, they're hard to listen to. In 1993, the pair John Venables and Robert Thompson, both aged 10, decided to skip school and take a trip to the local mall on a shopping spree. On their little adventure, the pair managed to steal batteries, toys, and even a bucket of paint. Later that day, they attempted to persuade a young boy out of a department store, but the boy's mother caught them and they ran to the butcher's store where they found a two-year-old boy who had just wandered out of the butcher's shop with their mother distracted. After some time had passed, the mother realized that her son was missing. She checked the entire mall but didn't find him. After filing a missing person report and two days of searching, the boy's body was found on railway tracks outside of Liverpool. His body in half. Autopsy revealed that the boy was long dead before the train ran over the body. The two boys were sentenced to prison and spent 20 years there to be released in 2013. The two now live under new names, but the mother of victims still receive taunting messages to this day. She feels like the real killer of her son may be messaging her and feels that the boys weren't the ones who killed her son. Number 7, Jesse Pomeroy. This one is an old case, but should still be brought to notice because it's probably one of the first instances of a kid making his way to prison for such a dangerous crime. In 1871, Jesse Pomeroy kidnapped and tortured four young boys when he was just 11 years old. In order to repent for what he did, he was sent to a reform school, but was then later released for good behavior. However, once he was out, he moved on from torture towards something much more deadly. After a few years later, Jesse Jesse met a little girl who he tortured for hours before eventually murdering her. He then also killed a four-year-old boy by slashing his body to death. When he was caught, Jesse Pomeroy admitted to his crimes without any feeling of guilt. As a result, he was taken back to custody where he spent a long chunk of his life. 
Number 6, Beaver Brothers. Fame is generally the goal for everyone, but is it possible to aim for the wrong kind of fame? This was the case with 18-year-old Robert Beaver and 16-year-old Michael Beaver. In July of 2015 in Oklahoma, the pair not only killed their parents and siblings, but also made plans to go on a mass killing spree in order to gain publicity and fame as serial killers. The parents were stabbed to death along with their 12-year-old and 7-year-old brothers, including their 5-year-old sister. They also attacked their 13-year-old sister, and fortunately, she survived the attack and is still well living today. The pair were brought forward before the court and were faced with five charges for first-degree murder, along with one charge of assault and battery with the intent to kill. They are currently facing a long time in prison, and it's not likely that they will ever get out of jail. Number 5, Keith Randulich. To a teen, a gun can be a great and cool thing to have, but they are also very dangerous. It makes you wonder how far people would be willing to go just to get a gun. When Chicago teen Keith Randulich turned 19, he asked his mother to get him a gun. It was an unusual request as anyone can imagine, and when his mother asked him why exactly he wanted a gun, he simply replied saying that he wanted to protect his young 4-year-old sister from a relative who was sexually abusing her and felt how having a gun would be the best way to do that. He made the claim with no evidence to support that any such thing was happening to his younger sister. As a result, his mother told Keith that he could not have the gun and refused to buy it. Later, on March the 22nd, 2009, Keith took his little sister down to the basement in the middle of the night and stabbed her in the neck. When police confronted him, he confessed to the crime and stated that the younger sister begged him to stop and asked him why he was hurting her so much. Keith was then sentenced to spend 40 years in prison. Number 4, Thompson Toddlers. We often see young kids as innocent, incapable of doing anything wrong, especially to others around them. But these two kids will prove your perception wrong. In Houston, Texas, Raquel Thompson, along with her boyfriend, decided to go out and pick up some takeaway pizza for themselves and their family. In doing so, they left their four children alone at home. While they were away, the twin three-year-old put their 19-month-old sister in the oven and turned it on. By the time the couple got home to their children, the young child had already died due to severe burns and injuries sustained due to the event. The police and the emergency team arrived on the scene and questioned the children. The twins confessed that one of them put the baby in the oven while the other turned on the oven. Despite the confession, no charges were filed and the twins got away. However, charges were filed against the parents for child endangerment and the children were all taken into foster care, including their five-year-old son who was asleep during the time of the incident. Number 3, Josh Phillips. We often send our kids outside to go and play with the neighborhood kids and they usually have a grand time doing so. But what happens when your young child goes out with the intent to kill? That's what happened here with 14-year-old Josh Phillips. He went out one day to play baseball with his neighbor, 8-year-old Maddie Clifton. After playing in the forest, Maddie was declared missing by Josh and her family. A search party was arranged, but days went by and nobody found the little girl. However, that was until one day Day where the waterbed in Josh's room was leaking and his mother decided to take a look and fix it. It was here that she found the body of Maddie Clifton. She had been beaten over the head with the baseball bat and stabbed 11 times and thrown inside of the waterbed. Josh was then sentenced to spend his life in a maximum security prison at the age of 14. Recently, a case has been filed to have Josh released on early parole, which the parents of Maddie Clifton have fought very hard to prevent. Josh is expected to be released released on 2094. Number 2, Christian Fernandez. In Florida, the 12-year-old Christian Fernandez was left alone with his baby half-brother in March of 2011 while their mother was out running an errand. At home, Christian proceeded to beat his brother to his final breath. He was then brought before the court and was sentenced to 7 years in prison and his mother has not been charged with anything as of yet. When Christian was brought into custody, he confessed to his crimes, claiming that he was thinking about his father when he killed his younger brother, who actually committed suicide to avoid charges of child abuse for beating up Christian. The sentence was only seven years because the judge felt some sympathy for Christian due to his past and moves the confession as inadmissible to the court resulting in the charge being lessened from first degree murder to manslaughter. Christian is expected to be out and rejoin society but not before spending his better years behind bars for what he did. 
Number one, Jordan Brown. There are just some things you don't see coming. Jordan Brown was just a young boy living a simple life with his father, stepmother, and sisters. On a fine morning before leaving work, Jordan's father asked him to fix up his room as they were expecting a new baby in the family and wanted to repurpose Jordan's room for the new baby as well. Jordan's father left that morning in a hurry and Jordan and his younger sister left pretty normal. It wasn't until sometime later that the youngest daughter came running out of the house screaming that her mother has died. Workers in the area made their way to the scene as soon as possible and called the emergency services. Jordan's mother had been shot in the face and investigation found the murder weapon a 20 caliber gauge shotgun in Jordan's room. Jordan was put to trial and his stepmother's family lobbied hard to keep him in prison but Jordan received a short sentence eventually making his way out of prison changing his name to try and redeem a normal life. So that has been the top 10 kids who grew up in prison. Now that we've made you sad and uncomfortable, why not check out these other videos to brighten up your day? With that being said, make sure to subscribe and I'll speak to you in the next video.